Welcome to Electron Lime. When the first results came back with the Hubble Space Telescope, of course, not that the results came back from space to the Hubble Space Telescope, and here we had the answers, we had to crank through a lot of data, do a lot of calculations, but the initial estimates as to the Hubble constant and the age of the universe were very different from what we thought before we sent the Hubble Space Telescope up there. And so it was a really big upheaval in the world of astronomy. The reason for that was that we had some old established known facts, at least things that we thought we're pretty sure of because we had been doing this kind of science for many decades and the people that spend their lives studying these kind of things were pretty sure that what they did were correct because they had been doing it for so long. So the idea was the age of globular clusters. Every large galaxy seems to have a set of these globular clusters. Our galaxy, Milky Way galaxy, has about 150, maybe upwards about 200 of these globular clusters. And they kind of swarm around the galaxy like bees around the beehive. And we're able to determine the age of the clusters by looking for the turnoff point on the HR diagram. So here's the main sequence of an HR diagram, and we can see that the, 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 the larger stars in the cluster, I was trying to think of the right words, but the larger stars in the cluster, like the blue giants and the very large white stars, well, they don't last very long in the main sequence, and so they've already disappeared, become red giants, and some of them have already become white dwarfs. And so we can see that the older the star is in a cluster, the more likely it is that it's still on the main sequence. And the point where we no longer see stars on the main sequence, we know where that point is, that point is associated with the age of the stars that have turned off. And we can tell the age of the cluster by where this turnoff point is. If the turnoff point is further down the, down the main sequence, the cluster is older. If the turnoff point is higher up on the on the main sequence and the cluster is younger. So we're able to come up with a pretty good estimate for the age of clusters based upon where that turnoff point is. And the turnoff point is easy to obtain by just looking at a bunch of stars within the cluster and by putting the results of that star, the color, the temperature and so forth, the spectral type, put them on the, uh, on the HR diagram and voila, we have the age of the cluster. So it seems like a pretty straightforward way of doing things. And based upon that, the oldest known clusters were aged to be 17 billion years old. Well, that means that, of course, that a universe had to be at least 17 billion years old, probably a little bit older than that. So when the data came back from the Hubble Space Telescope, the initial value of the Hubble constant ranged somewhere between 75 and 85 kilometers per, per second. It was actually a little bit higher than we expected it to be. And of course, then the initial estimates of the age of the universe range between 11 and 13 billion years old. Of course, we want to make sure that they've given some time to really work through their numbers. And finally, they began to settle down at a Hubble constant somewhere in the neighborhood of 78 kilometers per second per megaparsec, which gave us, gave us an age of the universe of 12.8 billion years. Obviously, there was a very big difference between what this group of astronomers said was the age of the universe, and then the new astronomers that have been working with the Hubble Space Telescope data came back and said, well, that's all technology. We got the best telescope in the world. This is what we know is to be true right now. And of course, there was a lot of going back and forth and actually a lot of very heated debates between the two camps. They said, well, this is such old established information. We know this to be true. You better go back to your numbers and take a look again because you probably made a bunch of mistakes. And they said, well, this is old technology. We got the best stuff in the world now. We have new estimates. These are more accurate than the ones that you have. And of course, in the end, it turned out that both camps were wrong. Definitely, these numbers were not valid. They were not calculated correctly. The numbers, after they did some more reviewing and more studying, those numbers started to come down. And after they reviewed the Hubble results, they realized they were a little bit, maybe a little bit uh, off on their numbers. They started bringing the Hubble constant down. The age of the universe started going up. And you can see that the two cans began to converge more and more over the years. But it's interesting to see that at the very beginning, both of them were simply wrong based upon, of course, what we know today. But at the time, we couldn't tell. And they both had a lot of good, if you want to call it that way, good debates, good arguments to try and come up with a solution to the obvious difference between the two results for the age of the universe. Again, it goes to see that science is not a certain thing. As we learn more, things keep on changing, especially when it comes to the science of astronomy, which is not as easy to work with 
as some of the other sciences because things are just so far away. And that is the world of astronomy and the world of the Hubble constant. Uh, that, would, that went on for several years. Oh, what year? What century? Oh, okay. So that was probably in the early 1990s is when they sent the Hubble up. So probably talk about 1994, 1995. What about the Oh, they've been doing that since the 50s. Uh, that's, that's an old technology, and even before then. The, the turnoff point on the, on the HR diagram is something we've known for a long time. So peop, people had entire careers, 30-year careers, doing this before this even came out. No, and we're still working with that. But yeah. now we have updated information that makes these things more accurate than so we used to have. Like the old, way the new oh yeah. Before we did all of this and when they had still very wild numbers on the Hubble constant, that's when they thought that this was pretty well settled science. It's never as settled as it seems. <laughs>